Hey, what's up folks? Jay Barino here. I'm going to be starting a new, shorter custom campaign called Unification of Purifiers. This is created by Cybros X. Cybros X was previously Narrow Dick. He changed his name to Cybros X on Mapster, so any of his future campaigns is going to be going by Cybros X. So this is a campaign that's going to revolve around the Purifier faction, which I quite like. Sentinels, Energizers, Purifier Colossi, mm mm mm. Some of my favorite units from the Void campaign, so I really look forward to using this. And this uh, campaign, it's four missions long, is fully voice acted, so let's get into it. I am Executor Chorus. When we joined the Firstborn, me and my brethren agreed to seek the truth regarding Endion. Endion has recently been cleansed of life by our own command ship, Cybros. We are receiving signals from untouched locations. We must investigate further. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, so uh, I noticed that there's little achievement boxes here, but they're unavailable. But just the idea that maybe that's something that will be added is really, really cool. I think I talked about this in a previous Cybros X uh, campaign, probably Shadow of the Brood, where at the end there's like a little achievement that pops up just to say that you've completed the map. I think that's really, really cool. And if you use bank data, you actually can kind of record achievements, especially if, if you have a mission launcher. That's where you could keep track of achievements and things like that. That would be really, really neat. So what do you have here? Energizer, that's about what I would expect. Chrono Beam, I love so much. And then Phasing Mode is just a nice little added benefit. Siege Cannon can attack ground and air units. That looks like Vanguard Cannons skinned like Purifiers and uh, on top of a Photon Cannon. So I'm excited to use that. Let's go ahead and go with Hard. That's usually what I do for Cybros X campaigns because they can get quite challenging on Brutal. So I feel like Hard's a great way to showcase. Let's get going. We're detecting a strange signal from within those nests. We must eliminate them before they spread into another area. Alright, subtitles. If you can't see the text of transmission, enable it in the settings. Okay, so let's get going. So first thing you're going to notice is all this stuff is skinned the way that you would expect from... Uh, for purifiers. It's really, really cool. These are not default skins for purifiers. These were actually created by a user. I don't remember who the name is. I'll have to look it up so I can uh, talk about it in the next video, but maybe someone in the comments knows. I'm sensing a Zerg presence in this cave. If we destroy this rock, we'll be able to block their path. Okay, so we're definitely going to want to do that. We do have our sentinels. They already have reconstruction. Reconstructing zealots, or sentinels rather, is yeah, so good. They're so, so terribly good. It's probably, it's my favorite flavor of zealots, even though they're all, they're all pretty good. And even the mining is 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 uh, orange. It's really, really, really neat. Let's go ahead and throw down our gas right away because we only have one geyser. Probably want to be looking for a an expansion here pretty soon. So very, very professional looking so far. You'll notice, you know, just the way that the skins are set up. Uh, fully voice acted with a mission launch screen possibility of uh, future achievements is really, really nice looking. Very, very good looking maps. That's one thing you can always count on from Cybros X is the maps always look very, very nice. They have a professional feel to them. So the biggest thing that I'd like to see more of in, in some of his campaigns would just be um, like a really engaging story. And uh, that's not to say there isn't a story, but I think that would be like the icing on the cake is if you took everything here, because again, visually and gameplay wise, these maps are always really, really good. I think visuals, uh, the way that the maps are doodadded and terrained, you know, and then you have some really, really interesting um, factions to play as like the Brood race. And then, of course, now we're playing as the Purifiers as their own race is just so cool and so, so fun to kind of get involved. And I like it a lot. Let's go ahead and throw down uh, some... Let's go ahead and throw down uh, another pylon. And you know what? I need to get a forge so that I can see what that uh, that crazy looking, uh, what's it called? A siege cannon? We got to see what that can do. So we need a, a few extra, oh, get in there. We need a few extra pylons anyway. So let's go ahead and throw another one up here. Is this a ramp? Can we build on this? I think this might, yeah, this is a ramp right here. So I think we're actually fine in this general area. Just got to wait for our forge to finish. Uh, let's go ahead and get an Energizer, and we're going to need more... I am detecting a drop pod near our location. We should eliminate it immediately. Okay, so we got a few things here to keep us on our toes. Was this the drop pod down here? Oh, okay, let's, let's, let's wait. Let's wait right now. Let's go ahead and throw down our Siege Cannon. It looks like the pylons use the same warping mechanics 
from multiplayer where your pylon needs to be touching a gateway or a nexus to get uh, faster warp in. So that's interesting. Let's go ahead and get ground weapons. Okay, that was cool. I just lost that. All right, you guys need to get in there. Our energizers do have an attack. Sometimes I've noticed... Well, I think it's the Havocs that don't have an attack, right? The energizer should always have an attack. So, purifiers between the Sentinels, and then the Energizers, and then Colossi using that uh, that Chrono Beam on all your anti-ground units is so terribly good. And what I, you know, you just throw in some form of, uh, of anti-air, and you're pretty much square. You're pretty much square as a purifier faction. You just need, like, some Stalkers slash Dragoons in there to attack air, or maybe Mirages, I suppose, and you are going to be just, just dandy. Let's go ahead and throw down another one. So this, uh, this Pylon Warp Conduit little uh, mechanic isn't going to matter because we don't have warp in right now. Maybe that's something we'll get in one of the future missions. Again, there's only... What did I say? There's four missions, I believe. So, um... This is going to be over before we know it, unfortunately. But I think Cyrus X is already actively working on another... On another campaign. I think it's Terran-oriented right now. I think that's what he told me. I don't know if it's being actively worked on or not. But uh, pretty much all of Cyrus's campaigns, they're all... Again, they're, they're, they have a professional feel to them. They... they are very akin to what you would see from a Blizzard map. Generally, Blizzard is going to introduce some new and unique uh, gameplay ideas. That I mean, that's kind of their job, is to introduce new things that the community most likely won't come up with. But what we see here is just, again, very, very visually great-looking maps with unique, new and unique ideas um, with units specifically. Look at these siege cannons. They're really, really cool. 50 damage! 50 damage versus uh, armor. That's crazy. Let's see. We're going to have to see how fast these attack. Oh, got tabbed out there. Has, that has not been happening too frequently for me recently, but there we go. I wanted to tab down here to see how well these did against Zergling. Seemingly just fine. All right, so let's go ahead and start pumping out our, our Zealots and Energizers. Now we're ready to start taking the fight to the Zerg. Okay, these certainly seem pretty pretty good. These, these, these cannons seem better than Photon Cannons. I will say that. What's the cost? 150. Okay, I probably need to be moving out and actually trying to destroy these things, because I'm not really sure what the consequences of leaving them up are. It's possible they just spawn units until you kill them. I see some, some roaches that are burrowed down there. Oh, they're probably just going to activate when we get there. It's nice that we already have charge. It's nice that we already have reconstruct, so we don't have to worry about that. And can we build anything else? Nope. Okay, that's okay, though. Um, we're, we're pretty well defended against these smaller attacks. It's just, it seems like with the drop pods, you get one larger attack that comes at you. I really need to move out. Zerg nest, Zerg nest, Zerg nest. So there's four, and then we have to destroy these rocks as well. So I'd like to move out sooner rather than later. I'm going to queue up two more energizers. And I think I'm underselling how good these sentinels are. I probably can move out very, very soon. In fact, I think I can move out with what I have. And if I get enough sentinels, then we should be fine. Or, actually, if we get enough Energizers, we should be fine if King Case there's, like, a Mutalisk or something. But the Sentinels, again, with Reconstruct, I'm kind of underselling how good they are, because they, they come back to life. They come back to life, and then they come back with full health and shields, too. It's crazy. It's crazy. So here we go. Coming back already. Excellent. And then it's only a 60... I believe it's only a 60-second cooldown on that. Uh, looks like 90. Oh, that poor guy got caught under the rocks. But uh, maybe it's only a 90 seconds. Cool, it must be 90 seconds. So a minute and a half of in-game time, keep in mind, which is a lot uh, faster than what you would normally expect. I really like these uh, these siege cannons. They shoot a, a little slower than photon cannons, but they're terribly powerful. Which um, I think the big thing about photon cannons is... Well, I was going to say their weakness is groups of small enemies because they shoot slower... So I suppose these share that same weakness, but they are going to pound through things like Ultralisks and Aberrations that try to attack us, so... That is probably going to be just fine. Let's go ahead and queue up a bunch of pylons, because we're going to need them. Here and here. Just get all those queued up, and we can get shields now. Change that. Okay, and I'm thinking that we go ahead and try to blitz our first Zerg High. We need pylons, so I'm just going to save that money until we know exactly what we actually want to spend it on. Let's go into our first Zerg Nest. Sentinels, secure this location. It will be useful for our objective. Okay, and I'm going to manually move in with the uh, the Energizer. So, uh, we can't really use the phasing mode because, again, we don't have, uh, we don't have warp in or warp gates, whatever. I've said it incorrectly. I hope someone doesn't 
get frustrated with me. Oh my god, I love Chrono Beam so much. 50% attack speed. The movement speed is fine, but... Ugh. The voicing sounds familiar. Now, I think... I think I read somewhere that that's actually Gradius. Now, if you remember Gradius, he made, uh... He made StarCraft Subjection, which was famously known for its voice acting as one of the first custom campaigns in general, plus it was voice acted, which was a really, really big deal. I mean, it still is. There aren't too many voice acted campaigns, so I think that's really, really cool that he, uh... He got involved in this. I think he, uh... He's been... Working on some ideas for his own new custom campaign, so I'm really excited about that. Looks like, okay, we can get through this. It's not the edge of the map or anything like this. This is the edge of the map, but that's fine. We get some extra money. I'm trying to figure out how to get up here. If you're not sure where to go and you feel safe doing so, just A-click somewhere you need to go and your, your units will find their way there. And I would recommend using A-click just in case. Because if you just run into enemies, then they're going to just roll over you because you're not attacking properly. So, just going to keep making units. We clearly have enough. I think I'm going to swing up and get that upper left area first. I like this large tower thing here. I thought that might have been a secret area with maybe some money in it. Alas. Oh. Oh, Chrono Beam. You are the light. You are the way. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, the Banelings. Well, this is what Reconstruct is for. Makes Banelings less scary. Maybe I shouldn't be clumping up. I should be sending one Zealot, but oh, well. We're through it. We made it through. That's the one thing on this map. You got to be real careful with those uh, those banelings. What's going on down here? Oh, attack! Get that gas while you're at it too. Get on up there. Get him. Get him, Energizer. Good work. Okay, we need those Energizers to get up here and kill these mutalisks. Get in there. You're my only anti-air. Probably just want to get more of those. I mean, they do their own damage. Plus. Again, their, their main thing for me is Chrono Beam, right? But the fact that they have an attack means you're not going to accidentally A-click them into a battle. Don't you worry, Koros. We're on it. We're killing all these larvae, too, because I feel like it. I could take one of these bases. I don't think it's very... Ne I mean, I could take this middle base. I guess let's do it, unless, you know... I, I feel like I probably have enough to complete this, as it is. But I'll go ahead and throw down a pylon and stuff so that we can... We can properly do this. Let's go ahead and, uh... Is that a Ravager? Seems like their attack wave decided to come up here. Get that... Get that jerk. Oh, poor guy. I thought maybe he'd reconstruct. Move out of the bile. Okay. Does Corrosive Bile do friendly fire? That's one thing I honestly have no idea about. And if it, if it does, then it probably is worth your while to make a lot of melee units because the AI is going to kill itself. Though I'm pretty sure it doesn't do friendly fire. I'm pretty sure, so I don't know why I'm bothering. So let's just do this. There we go. Okay. And then uh, more Sentinels. More Sentinels. Lots and lots of them, too. Give me them Sentinels. A few Burrowed Roaches here and there is no problem. Again, we, we have Reconstruction, so we are in real, real good shape. This area, constantly getting attacked, probably from this, it's probably from this bottom right area, actually. But that's uh, not a big problem. Got some random scantipedes around. I will leave those alive because I am a benevolent ruler. Even though, as the purifiers, we did indeed try to erase all life on Endion. So that's the story of this so far is we're, set, we're kind of investigating why there are still Zerg on this planet considering Cybros just completely purified the planet. It's like classic StarCraft 1 Protoss where they move in and they purify a planet like the Conclave wanted. There ain't no Tassadar here. We're, we are just going to wipe out all life on the planet. So it's interesting to see there's still an infestation down here. I, uh, I really, really like the voice acting. It's good voice acting. Uh, I like the filter used for the protest voices. Plus, I don't have to read subtitles out loud, which is always welcome from my perspective of showcasing. Let's kill all these larvae. Let's do it. All right. Random roach. And it's nice that, you know, if you build the same unit four times from four different buildings, you're going to have four of them come out at once. And it seems like not a big deal, but it's actually quite nice, because what that means 
Let's see how we're doing on minerals here. Let's transfer some probes. What that means is if you if you see them getting attacked, you can A-click and probably survive because you have four units there instead of just one who's rallying up like an idiot and going to get picked off. You have four units that can... Nice. I wonder if there's more of those that we can find. Let's just swing up here. I mean, we're almost done with this map. But anyway, yeah, if you have, you know, four sentinels coming down, you notice one gets attacked, hit F2, and then A-click in the same general direction of your army, and then all of those sentinels will defend themselves. It's nice that we've got a Colossi here, Colossus here, singular, with that fire beam. Mm. Oh my god, it's so, it's so terribly good. Oh, it's so good. So one Colossus is good enough for me. I'm glad that I checked down there, and I don't know, maybe, maybe there's another one somewhere. I suppose we want to check everywhere. Well, we destroyed those rocks. That, I think, was just, you know, spitting out Zerg to bother us. Uh, this is like the dream combination right here. I mean, again, you throw in a little bit of anti-air, and you are square. This is why when I play co-op, I like playing Karrax a lot, because I focus on the Spear of a Dune, but then I also, I pretty much make this exact composition with a few more Colossi in there. And then I use the Spear of a Dune for anti-air, and it's, oh, I love it so much. This is probably my favorite Protoss compos composition. Well done, warriors. Thank you. Thank you! Koros being friendly. Terrans? What can such lowly beings be doing on Endion? They left some schematics here. I shall contact my brethren. We must explore further. Sweet deal. I'm really liking this campaign so far. Quite like it a lot. So when we come back, we'll be playing Mission 2. Hope you're enjoying so far, and hope to see you next time. Bye now.